Alright, hello students. Uh, welcome to your first podcast of the year. Uh, this one is going to be uh, the five themes of geography. And we've already started working on this stuff in class. So this is just kind of a review or uh, hopefully s s uh, help answer some of your questions. All right. So the first theme that we're talking about is location. Okay, so location refers to where is it? All right. Um, you think of location two ways. There's absolute location, uh, which refers to like an address or uh, latitude and longitude coordinates, or there's the relative location of a place. Uh, you know, like between York Road and Ironwood, eight miles east of South Bend, something along those lines. Okay, so if we look here at the two maps, uh, the first one here is absolute location. All right, this is just a MapQuest map. You know, this uh, this little dot right here. Our star represents uh, where Stanley Clark School is, so it gives it, you know, GPS directions would give you an absolute location. Or the map over here on the right of the screen, uh, this is more of relative location. So with this map, uh, you know, let's talk about North Dakota. So we could say North, North Dakota is located uh, between Canada and Mexico, or we could even say located uh, between Canada and South Dakota. So again, you know, with this we're just talking about this one's relative, all right, and this one is an absolute. The second theme of geography is regions. And regions usually share one common feature, okay? And there are different types of common features. Political regions, uh, so a country, a state, or city, uh, climate, is also part of a region. You know, areas have the same type of temperature, or they have the same rainfall in the year. Uh, also, the culture of that area uh, can help be one of the attributes. All right. Uh, however, there's one place in the in the entire world that is part of a different region. All right, and that's Hawaii. All right, because politically it belongs to the United States, but in terms of region, its climate and culture really don't line up with what the United States are, so it's unique in its own little way. Alright, so let's look at this map here. Alright, and on this map we can see, uh, you know, even here in the continent of Africa, uh, the most of Africa is considered Afrikan. Alright, so we have Afrikan here. However, if we look up here to the north of Africa, the area that touches the Mediterranean Sea is actually considered Mediterranean. So even though uh, these nations and countries and stuff are within the same location of each other, their regions are different. All right? So that's uh, a uniqueness kind of about what the different themes are. Our third theme is place. All right, and replace refers to natural and human features that make one place different from others. All right, so this can be identified by landforms, climate, the plants, animals, people, language, or culture. So there's really a lot of different factors that go into the theme of place. Um, there's also what we call a geographic signature. All right, uh, so what that means is that this signature can help people identify or understand where uh, this place is. So the best example of this, one of the best examples, is the Eiffel Tower. Right? Most of us know that the Eiffel Tower uh, is located in Paris, France. All right? So this will help us locate exactly where uh, Paris, France is by if we identify with what the Eiffel Tower looks like. Right? Our fourth theme is movement. Okay, and movement refers to how do people, goods, and ideas move from one place to another. That's kind of the main idea behind movement. How are people, goods, and ideas moving? All right. So this happens when one place often affects what happens in another. And this, there are great examples of this throughout history. Um, but it helps you trace the spread of goods, people, uh, and ideas from one location to another. So like I said, lots of examples. Here's a great one, the Columbian Exchange. Uh, fifth, sixth graders, you guys learned about this last year in fifth grade, all right? When Columbus came over from, you know, when he came, when he went west, uh, he brought with him a whole bunch of different crops. And in return, they took crops back 
to Europe with them. Right. So we have this exchange or this movement of goods from one area of the world to another. And this really links the different worlds together. Right. Our last theme is Human Environment Interaction, or HEI. Okay. This focuses on the relationship between the people and the environment. All right, so as people live in an area long enough, they're going to begin to manipulate the area to make their lives easier. All right, so an example of this would be to build a dam to control flooding during rainy seasons. Uh, think of right now, you know, Hurricane Isaac is hitting Louisiana. Well, Louisiana has a system or are called levees, and these levees are supposed to help regulate uh, water flow. All right? If they didn't have them, then lots of areas would flood and end up causing a lot of damage because most of Louisiana is actually uh, below sea level. <laughs> All right? So, which leads me to the last point here the environment can affect how people live, work, dress, travel, and even communicate. All right? So, here we see um, how humans are interacting in their environment. This is a strip mine. All right? So, people um, are farming. Uh, a mineral, probably limestone, right? And we can see the different the quarries here, all right? And they're taking it and shipping it someplace else. You can see the little tractor. There's a little tractor right there. There's a tractor there, all right? So they're taking this good to someplace else to sell. So again, the humans are are interacting with their environment in that way, all right? So if you guys have any questions, hopefully this uh, helped clear up uh, some maybe some misunderstandings you have. Uh, good luck with your activities and uh, make sure you take great notes and I will see you uh, later.